an issue here too, because repurposing, like cutting up a long form video into multiple snippets requires that whoever's processing it isn't just using a Jasper and a Descript, but they have to actually understand headlines. It, it's wrong from the start. It pollutes the agency owner because I believe the agency owner should start with authority. Sharing how they are using our techniques to drive more real leads that turn into cases using social media ads. I owe you a big thank you because um, I've been kind of quietly building my own content factory for a long, long time. I shouldn't say a long time, not like nearly as long as you, but um, but I, I didn't necessarily know how to easy, easily explain to somebody what I was doing. And then mm -hmm. I came across a Dennis U video that said the content factory is 18 minutes long and it shows how you create long form content, splice it into micro content, how you distribute that micro content, test it. And I sent that to a client of mine and like it clicked instantly. And so we built a whole team around this content factory, got two video editors, three people distributing a graphic designer doing all the thumbnails and stuff. And they've been just like massively putting out stuff. And the other thing too, is, uh, you know, like uh, you did a decent job of helping them set expectations of what, you know, cause content is a long game, not a put up a video and, you know, all of a sudden you got millions of fans and adorers and all those kind of thing. It's a repetition kind of game. And so not only did you help them create it, understand it, articulate it, but also understand like how long they need to stay at it to be successful. 18 minutes, man. Like I, I couldn't, I couldn't have done that better myself. I just <laughs> sent them a link to your YouTube video and it was done. Thank you, my man. Hey, let me give you something else too. I've been working on that, that's one step further which I think is helpful and you can replicate all day long. Mm, let me show you this one thing. See, if you have some graphics designers or whatnot, they could take this. You see this? Yeah, let me screenshot this. I'll just send it to you in a sec. Okay. That is, and I'll send you the templates behind it. Yeah. You can even have this little training. You can watch this training, watch this first. So, the, the content factory gets boiled down into four phases. Yeah. The first part is producing the content, which is the toughest part because the client has to do it. So that's why we have the training on how to do one minute videos Yeah, and all the stuff on how do you set up your camera and the sound like we talked about and all these different ways of content, mostly long form video that can get chopped up in phase two. So the client does phase one, we do two, three, and four. And this is why it's key to set the expectation because we're not producing the content because they're producing yeah. the content in video. Yeah. We are processing the content. And this is using Descript and all these other tools and transcribing and video editing tools. Yeah, yeah. Not Premiere and After Effects, except for transitions, motion graphics, and things that actually require, require like real video editing tools. Yeah. Publishing in the third stage is repurposing to all these other places. That's the real one. We're finding at least, I wanted to ask you about that because I find that one to be the biggest bottleneck is actually like taking the massive amounts of stuff and distributing it and titling it and writing descriptions. But it sounds like you're using Jasper a lot for that or, or how you... Well, Jasper does a lot, is really good at headlines and you know Dave and Austin and those guys would argue that it does a lot more than that. But I find that, you know, it can, like you can use Jasper to simplify and rewrite spoken words into proper articles. Yeah. But I think you still need a lot of human intervention. And yeah. this is where VAs stumble. So that we have a an issue here too, because repurposing, like cutting up a long form video into multiple snippets requires that whoever's processing it isn't just using a Jasper and a Descript, but they have to actually understand headlines and content and copywriting to, yeah. to some degree, not to a pro level. And then the last stage promote that's dollar a day. Yeah. That's finding out what works the best, the greatest hits, right. Which is the, the top pieces yeah. of content running ads against it forever, stepping up the spend on it. So that's actually been a little bit of a revelation because not that I'm, I'm, I'm not like directly using your nine by nine verbatim, 
Mm. But uh, the idea, like what I really liked is when you understand what you're really doing is building relationships at scale, relationships aren't closed on a single ad. Like even the people that typically like in my news feed that a lot of people think like write amazing ads. Like I remember for years, people would talk about Sam Ovens ads mm -hmm. and I'm like, well, he has 800 ads. He's hit you with that's his content distribution. It doesn't, you know, like it's not obvious to people, but that's his version of dollar per day. It's not one single ad that's converted you. It's that this guy's been in your news feed for so damn long. And so yeah. repetitively. And so made me realize that if, if you launch campaigns that come at them from multiple angles, not only, does it build a relationship faster, but you don't have to constantly fucking change creatives because they're seeing nine, 10, 12, 20 different creatives instead of just, mm -hmm. you know, one and then, okay, let's test a new one or, you know, split test two or how people typically do it. Yeah. So a massive evergreen library instead of every, you know, week coming up with a new idea, like there's no need to come up with anything new unless yeah. you're a pickup artist trying to say something new. <laughs> so you can borrow these templates and then for you and for your clients, you don't have to have all this major media. You don't have to be a big time speaker, digital marketer. You don't have to be, you know, a best-selling author. You don't have to know everyone in the industry. Yeah, you do. You really do know everyone. I don't know how you've managed, but yeah, I see, you're fucking everywhere, dude. I see you like you're in Pakistan <laughs> one day and then, yeah. you know, like the amount of conferences that you must do is, is the podcast that I'm on, the people I interview, the conferences. We got to update this. This says 730. It's actually 800. And this 5 million is actually 6 million now, but, and it's in the last 30 years. The universities that we teach at, and the programs we have there, and all the things the professors have to say, like all these people are saying good things about me, which is great. Love these yeah. people, right? And then we put these in the courses and repurpose them into books and, and whatnot. But the thing that people don't get, like, I think they, so Frankie, they get the tactical, technical stuff of like using tools and running ads and targeting, which I don't think even matters, but people still care about targeting. Yeah. It goes back to the relationship building, which is what you said, relationship building at scale. I heard that, which is fantastic music to my ears. And, you know, I've been teaching this topic wheel and three by three thing for 20 plus years. So I, I think about, you know, what do I stand for? I'm the million jobs guy. How do I create a million jobs? That sounds like some lofty thing. Like, oh, I want to make a million dollars. I want to create a million jobs. There's these different topics I care about. But if I say that I know about digital marketing, if I just say myself, here's how you do why. If I say we want to create courses and educate people, that carries zero authority, right? If I just say that, if I'm saying that, right? Yeah. But if I'm doing this with Ryan Dice, or Michael Stelsner, or other people like Al Casey, who, you know, managing people, I could think I know a lot about managing people because I've hired an army of VAs. But why not the CEO of American Airlines? You, you would figure that's managing a lot of people. You think about how many employees are at an airline. Yeah. Or education. I've done a lot of training and coaching and Zooming and whatnot. But how about Dr. Karen Freeberg, who is the number one professor that teaches all the other professors how to do social media? Or how about in these other sorts of folks, right? Bradley, whoever it might be. Yeah. And then if I have publicly a lot of content that I've repurposed, right, which is stage three out of the four stages of the content factory into multiple channels. And then I found lots and lots of just, this is that whole Sam Ovens thing you're talking about. Yeah. I have thousands of pieces of content and I'll find ones that are winners. Like there's one with Grant Cardone and I talking about how to make a one minute video or for real estate agents, me and Tom Ferry teaching a digital marketing masterclass, which is great for all real estate agents because they know who Tom Ferry is. Yeah. So from all of these, I will find a hit. And then from these hits, I don't have to do anything except allow it to continue to run for a dollar a day. So I don't have to make any more content because this topic wheel is not based on a calendar. It's based on relationships that are evergreen. And I think if people understood this piece here, digital marketing would be simplified and it sets expectations, like you said, because if I want to get six pack abs, I'm not going to the gym one time and expecting results when I walk out. Yeah, I'm going to be building this structure. I'm going to build this foundation with the people that are credible, that are saying good things about me because we have a mutual relationship. We've, we've created so much content to demonstrate that relationship over time. 
and I run ads against it on multiple channels so people can see it on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, yeah. Pinterest, Snapchat, whatever. So I, I have this book that's the number one best-selling book in social media on Amazon. And this book, co-written by Perry Marshall, who is the OG, and no one's sold more books in online marketing than this guy has. Yeah, I've read all this stuff. It's a spoken book. We didn't actually write the book. We interviewed a ton of people who are crushing it on TikTok. And then we had our team of VAs process it, repurpose it into a book. And now we're running dollar a day ads on Amazon. So I'm using the same four stages over and over again. So I'm constantly using these same four stages over and over and over. Yeah. And so we have armies of VAs that do this. And then we have training against how we do this. Should we do a, a piece of content actually about this right now? Because I wanted to introduce yeah. the Conquer Local, but um, maybe if we could show it visually with these slides, we might be able to like. Really yeah, I mean, we, you could use this as a voiceover or with the slides or, you know, whatever you want to do. I mean, what I, what I just well, showed you. What do you think is, is, is the, the best thing I wanted to ask you? I mean, I don't know how you want to do this, whether you want to do. Um, like I'll interview you, you, you first, or you interview me. It's up to you. Like I'm open to whatever. I mean, it's, I mean, let's, let's just look when we, when we have a natural conversation, then it just flows well. And we can cut out snippets. I mean, yeah. this can be a long form thing too. And then we also a bunch of little snippets, like the thing that I just showed you, that could be a little snippet or it could be cut into two or three snippets. Yes. Dude, I love the way you think. Like you're, um, you're probably for real. Like I'm not blowing smoke up your ass, but you're probably the most visionary, innovative human being I know alive about creating content. I'm sure there's other people cooler than you on planet Earth when it comes to that, but I don't know them. So this is kind of amazing just to hear about how you think about creating content, leveraging it, leveraging relationships, like, you know, just little things that I've seen you do because you understand the game is building relationships. I saw the, the post about on Twitter, you'll do an interview, for example, where you'll be with one of the top experts in the niche, and then you'll run dollar per day ads to their followers. So they all know who you are. And, uh, you know, I'm experimenting a little bit like this on YouTube, for example, doing that with like Josh Nelson and stuff in this yeah. space. Yeah. And same deal, right? Like, you know, it, it make it hard for them not to notice you when you're, uh, but you, you, you build the relationship so much faster because you start it with that kind of borrowed credibility. Like just the way your, your mind thinks about that is pretty incredible to me. This is what happens when you take a search engine engineer and let them wander into marketing. <laughs> <laughs> But because you're you're kind of doing it like thinking about relationships, because I, I see this like in my world, I get a lot of people who they want to outreach to strangers. That for whatever reason, agency owners always think the the, yeah. the journey begins with outreach. And there's a preconceived idea mm -hmm. that there's some magic script that mm -hmm. if you just send this words, they're gonna give credit cards. And as you know, obviously that's mm -hmm. about as realistic as like if you use this magic pickup line, women will throw their underwear at you. Um, you know, it's, it's more like, how can we open the door to a relationship that will flower and blossom later? Because that's what we're really building. Well, this, and this you, cold outreach dream 100 thing, it, it's wrong from the start. It pollutes the agency owner because I believe the agency owner should start with authority for the same reason that a surgeon in the emergency room carries a lot more authority than a used car salesperson, a door-to-door -door person selling solar. Because that surgeon in the emergency room, you had to go to the surgeon because you got in a car accident or something happened. Yeah. And so you trust the surgeon. You're, you're not saying, I want to talk to three other surgeons. You're not arguing about the price when you go to the hospital because it's inbound. But the common response when I mention this is, yeah, but I don't have the authority and I don't have all these inbound leads. I'm not well known. So I have to go door to door to generate leads because if I don't generate these leads, I can't pay my bills. But that's completely wrong because all it does is reinforce the fact that you don't have authority. So when you do get those cold leads onto a discovery call for just 15 minutes or whatnot, yeah. then you have to try to convince them of a problem. You have to try to sell them that you they can need. feel it almost too. You can feel the arm foldedness of like, sell me, big boy. Yeah. I was a keynote at one of the Infusionsoft conferences. And when I got off the stage, 
some old dude came up to me and said, Hey, go ahead and sell me. Go ahead. You know, here's your opportunity to try to make some money. Go ahead and sell me on what your packages are. And I said, Hey man, with all due respect, I'm not here to sell anybody. If you like what we're talking about on the processes on how to run Facebook ads to drive more leads, then I welcome you to check it out. And if you have questions in particular about some nuances about how we do stuff or about our packages, happy to answer your question. And he said, dude, you are terrible at sales because, you know, if you're good at sales, you would just be salivating the chance because this could turn into a customer. I could even be a client of yours. And he said, there's a whole, you know, no offense, there's a whole line of people that want to work with us. I don't even need any more clients. I have more clients than I know what to do with. Our biggest, and that's why our biggest thing is hiring and training. If we train more people, we can satisfy the demand. I'm not here to convince anybody of anything, right? The hospital is not there to convince you that you're in pain and you need a liver transplant or a heart operation, Yeah, right? We know people are sick. We know the majority of people out there are sick and obese. Now, if they want help, we'll help them. But if they, if they don't want help, I'm not going to waste all the time to try to convince them they need help. Yeah. I'm going to take the ones that come into the hospital. Yeah, but I can't get people to come into the hospital. I'm a new digital agency. I don't have 30 years of experience like you do. Great. Then partner, like you said, Frankie, with someone who does have authority. Partner with a Josh Nelson. Partner with someone else who's bigger. Can, I just, can I just add real quick on this, Dennis? Because when I started in 2016 in the, the, the lawyer space, like I literally didn't even know a lawyer in my personal life. Like I knew zero lawyers. So the idea that you have to have... And what I did, one of my first moves is I had to Google it because I didn't know, but I'm like, who are the top lawyers on earth? And I reached out to the largest personal injury law firm, which is Morgan & Morgan in uh, Orlando, for those of you guys who don't know. And I just said, hey, I love what you guys are doing. I think it's really cool. I'd love to interview you and share your thoughts on growing a law firm. And they said, and, and this is Frankie Finn with zero following. Nobody knows who I am. I got no podcast. I got no proof of anything. I, I don't even have a show. There's nothing I can reference. And they said, well, does July 27th at 2 mm -hmm. p.m. work or, you know, Friday at 2 p.m.? And so you can, you can like, you know, there, there's nothing that stops you from going in and connecting with the big players in your space and boring that. And I found in my space, there's a huge difference between Frankie Finn saying, um, hey, I'm Frankie Finn and this is the cool way to grow a law firm versus like, Hey, I was having a discussion with Morgan and Morgan, you know, John Morgan about how he yeah. grew his personal injury law firm to the biggest on earth. And here are some of the things he said that were really important. It's, it's, it's a much more powerful that thing. So is, like that's exactly the thinking that every agency owner needs to understand. Let me show you. So Morgan and Morgan is the biggest player in personal injury. So if you're going to be targeting personal, like you know this, Frankie, but for anyone else, if you want to get personal injury attorneys, you need to seek the lighthouse. The lighthouse is the person who's the best known in the area because you as an agency, you're not an attorney. You're not a dentist. You're not a real estate agent. You're not, you know, whatever the thing is. So if I wanted to serve real estate agents, I wouldn't just go call up real estate agents all day long and say, hey, would you like more buyer and seller leads? No, I would, I would try to create content together with Tom Ferry, who's the number one guy in real estate. This, this is the inception, the dream inside the dream inside the dream, playing chess multiple steps ahead. And then when I have a video and whatnot with Tom Ferry going on and on about you know, how to do digital marketing, all these other real estate agents will say, if Tom Ferry, here, I'm going to play this beginning clip, which is a little bit pompous, but just listen. Oh, I love your pompous shit, dude. You're... you're for as genius as you are, you're far too modest, I think. But this is something I'm only showing it not to boast, but I'm sh I want to sh show you what I'm intentionally collecting or our team is intentionally collecting processing as part of this content factor. Okay. Yeah. So here's the beginning of this podcast. Just listen carefully to what hey, I'm going to pull. The podcast. First of all, we've been on this tear on all things video, whether it's the videos you should be creating or how to become camera ready. Today, I want to introduce you to Dennis Yu, and of course, Jason Pantana is joining as well. Um, when I think about Dennis and his background, and I'm going to ask you to give, you, give him the scoop, I yeah. think of uh, Seth Godin, email marketing, Dennis Yu, all things digital marketing. So no pressure, by the way. <laughs> but, you know, now, imagine there's only a few people that saw this because it was on YouTube. Some people saw this. But, Real know, estate agents, of course. I think 
So some people saw this here. And then you can see the comments here. Look at these comments. And they're all like this. They all say this, right? This was also shared on Twitter. This also ranks on the web in SEO. It, it's on multiple channels. But only a few thousand people have seen this. And there are almost 2 million real estate agents. So if I don't repurpose it to multiple channels, and if I don't run ads against it, then I'll have this blip, just like I got featured in Forbes last week for the new book we have, or, what, or you know, I spoke at a conference, but it's not being seen. So I would ask you, Frankie, if you have a moment like this with John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan, then what are you going to do to get the most mileage out of that one piece of content? Yeah, that's what people are missing. Agency owners, they don't understand that part because they're too busy trying to fill up their calendar, whatever the hell that means. Fill up your calendar with more appointments. Yeah. By I'll the way, I can just, can I just add for anybody who's ever done that, that it's fucking terrible. Nobody tells you what a full calendar of unconvinced strangers, how miserable and draining that'll make your life. And then you barely have any time if you, if you do it well, well, like most people are talking you barely have any time to deliver like a world-class deliverable because you're too busy trying to, you know, take calls and convince strangers to, you know, what almost results in a high form of begging as we're, you know, kind of what you're showing here mm -hmm. where you're coming in with somebody like Tom Ferry, who ha already has this industry clout and credibility. It's, it's yeah. much more like seductive, pull you in. I want to work with the best people are going to see somebody they know, uh -huh. like, you know, you've got stuff out there. For example, we, we talked earlier about Grant Cardone. There's yeah. a lot of people who know who Grant Cardone is. When they see you together, they're just going to assume Dennis is fucking awesome. I want to be part of his world. Yeah. So let me show you how to how to break into a niche. Because <clears throat> if you're an agency, you have to choose a niche. If you don't choose a niche, you're called a legacy agency. And those are really hard to do where you yes. do everything for everyone. Don't do that. I don't want to even go into why that's ridiculous. But let's say you choose a, a vertical niche. Let's say you, you're choosing lawyers and technically you're choosing lawyers, but you're doing PI, which is a, a subset, but the biggest one inside lawyers. Correct. Now, my friend Ali Awad is the yeah, biggest know, social media on or the biggest lawyer on social media. And he had a conference a couple of years ago, a few years ago, actually, that was called the CEO Lawyer Summit. And so I'm doing a search inside my Google photos in Atlanta. Like I was on CNN in front of three and a half million people arguing with Zuckerberg and all this. You can see all this stuff here. There's, um, why is this not showing up in here? Maybe it's, oh, I know why. Cause I got to say Georgia. Cause it wasn't technically in Atlanta, Atlanta. Yeah. Okay. So I was well, speaking. My man, Ken Hardison. I've worked very, very closely with Ken. Ken Hardison's fantastic. And yeah. Ken Hardison runs Pilma. So for anyone who's a personal injury attorney, this is the conference you want to be a part of. This is the organization. This is the membership. Ken does a lot of stuff for Pilma. And guess who does Ken Hardison's SEO and digital marketing? We do. And yeah, we did yeah, such yeah. a good job over the first few months. Like if I come here and I do... Pilma Zoom, and I've got these recordings. Can I just say that that is a hell of an inbox, my friend? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> you're making stuff happen. I see just the amount of stuff you're doing, and I can tell you're a batch communicator, which is is a whole other subtopic. Which of like when you're going to communicate with people, messaging a hundred people in an hour, you know, doing it when it fits your schedule is far more convenient than you know, like answer 10 minutes here, five minutes there. And that, that kind of thing. I can tell you just have some organization to how you do it. I do. I have a whole training on how do you manage your time and how do you get your inbox to zero every day? <laughs> I have 118 courses inside our Academy. I even have a course on how to build a course. Everything that I do, I document to make it repeatable and everything that we do, we turn into courses. So all courses are packages and all packages are courses. And here's this one. How do I 10X the value of my time? You have some things you do that are worth 20 bucks an hour, like laundry and going to Costco. Well, I'll just have a maid do that. And people think I'm lazy because Suzanne is my personal assistant. She yeah. takes me from the airport. She 
mails packages at the FedEx. She does all these things because I'd rather do things that are worth, well, I don't do the $200 an hour things anymore because it's not worth it. There are things that I do that are worth $20,000 an hour. So why wouldn't you just replace all the $20 and $200 and $2,000 an hour things with things that are worth $20,000 and just outsource the rest? I'm just doing time arbitrage. Yeah. You know who's really brilliant at articulating that is your co-author Perry Marshall. He got me to realize yeah. that in business there's you know what I call a thousand dollar an hour CEO tasks and then uh -huh. two dollar an hour kind of virtual assistant. And often those things like to produce an outcome get lumped in together. Uh -huh. and I see so many people in all areas of entrepreneurship doing the thousand dollar an hour work, but also doing the two dollar an hour part of it. You know, like you mentioned, obviously mm. your content machine for for I see as you, you know, connecting with Perry or Ken Hardison or whoever, like, you know, Tom Ferry in a niche and creating content is thousand dollar an hour CEO work. Yeah. But the actual editing it, producing it, uploading thumbnails, all of those things, to me, that's like two dollar an hour work. And you have a yeah, exactly. So you just focus on the high leverage things, which are you ideally in person with a lighthouse, which we defined, and a figurehead. And so you mentioned Perry Marshall. Perry Marshall wrote the 80-20 rule, all these other things. He's a legend. And then I interview him about these particular topics. So this is the raw video off my iPhone. And I'm asking him questions about whatever, right? Uh, that's not the one. <laughs> that's a pretty furrowed Perry. Oh, the, these these are our interactive video responses. We coined that term because they. So I'm asking him all these questions on on what I know Perry Marshall to stand for. So he's talking eighty twenty. Eighty twenty has a lot to do with crackles and chaos. I thought, whoa. I know a lot about that. Wait a minute. That means 8020 is everywhere. That means there's an 8020 inside the 8020. That means it would have to be a calculus curve. And I started obsessing about this calculus curve. And, and one day it was Friday. All day long, I was trained to work out this problem. I mean, he, so he has some crazy stories, as you know, and you can Google him and see. But this moment was captured on my iPhone. But do, do I have time? I'm asking kind of rhetorically, but I want to hear what you have to say. <clears throat> So I was with Perry and we made some content where I don't have time to upload this to tell the VAs. Yeah, I did this thing with Perry Marshall and he's talking about 8020 and he's got a best selling book on that topic. And it was in Berwyn, Illinois, here at his house. And here, like, I literally made the video and that's it. No uploading, no managing, no whatever. So all you and I have to do as business owners is literally make the video and the other four stages of the content factory should automatically happen because of the VAs following the process. But right. here, if some random person in the Philippines or Pakistan or whatever were to look at these different photos or whatnot, how would they have the context? How would they know that this is Perry Marshall? Did I categorize, did I tag this photo as Perry Marshall? You did indeed. Did I? It looks, oh, I don't know, actually, maybe you didn't. I'm sure you've got some inception level way of determining that. I never know how your crazy brain works. So Perry Marshall and I, we are eating some Mexican food at his favorite taco spot about two blocks away from his house. And while we are eating fajitas and we have food all over our face because we're eating like, because you always want to order the queso. That's like the the test of whether, you know, what <laughs> that's what I do, you know, the free chips, you don't want to get full on the free chips or whatever, yeah. eating queso and fajitas. And then he says something super insightful. And I said, whoa, 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 say that again. What did you just say? Start, start again. Okay. So my favorite way to define your unique selling proposition is the if, if, then else guarantee. If you are the right kind of person in the first place. If you showed up with these certain things checked off and not these other ones, and if you cooperate with us in these in the following prescribed ways, which means you have to install the software or you have to shoot the 15 second videos or you have to go to the conference in Madrid or like whatever, 
if you're the right person, if you did the right thing, cooperating with us, then you will get this result. And I guarantee it. Or else a penalty back to me, the provider, because you checked all the required boxes and you didn't get your required result. Best guarantee in the world. What do you think of that? You know, it's fu it's funny because um, it, it's so uniquely brilliant. I'll tell you, not enough people think about the first part of what he said, which is if you are the right person. I see this, you know, because like, you know, we, we've talked about like kind of, you know, niching this a little bit to agency owners is, but I mean, this is true of all entrepreneurs in general is I see like so many people focused indiscriminately as if every dentist in the world is going to be equal for you to work with. And, you know, I've seen this, especially if you work a lot with local businesses, there's some people that may have grown 40 years on referrals and word of mouth. And, th and that's cool, right? Like there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're, if your solution involves running Facebook ads or TikTok ads, they're just not going to be a good fit. Like it's just, it's never going to work no matter how you splice that. And, and having his first part of that to me is, is particularly brilliant. Like if you are the right person who matches this criteria, I think half the battle is just having clarity about that statement. Cause then you can make it and then you can show up with power where you're like, you know, I'm not claiming this is for everybody, but if you are this specific type of person and we can produce this specific type of result guaranteed, um, you know, there, there's some real brilliance in that. You know, obviously I, I wrote a whole book on actually the value of, of basically being able to make a statement like that, but Perry's able to say what took me like 20 pages and a sentence or two. Yeah. So the reason why I showed that was not about the piece of content about if, if, then else. It was to show you that I was eating Mexican food with Perry and he happened to drop that nugget and we weren't in the studio. We were just eating Mexican food. And I said, that's awesome. Just say that one more time, please. It was so good. And so when you capture moments like this, and then you let them run through a content factory, provided you have one, that's where the magic begins. It's, it's not the fact that Perry Marshall was talking about the 80-20 or about how agencies need to focus and qualify people. To, to what you said, those are all true. But the bigger picture that I'm trying to show is this is how you as an agency owner should be thinking about the collecting of content to build your authority because it's based on the relationships of what other people have to say. So Frankie, if you look at my content and you have, I'm spending 90% of my time uplifting other people. I'm not talking about myself. I'm always congratulating other people on their success. I'm sharing knowledge that someone else had. I'm constantly being a cheerleader for other people. Yeah. Why am I doing that instead of talking about how I'm generating leads and how much money I'm making, and how successful I am and what I have done and how much I know? Why am I doing that? Well, I would say, you know, firstly, is, is because, you know, it's a relationship driven idea is, is you know, you want to bring just all kinds of value. I don't know. I mean, you're an inception level kind of guy, but also I would say because of that, you know, um, in many ways, it's the one who talks the least, but like, you know, I'm sure when you're sitting with Perry, like when he drops a nugget, it's like, it only takes him 20 seconds to say something profound. You're one of those kind of guys, but I'd love to hear your answer because it's probably a lot better than the one I just gave. I mean, you're trying to make it all complex and fascinating and deep secrets. It's this simple. When other people talk about you, it's better, way more authoritative than you talking about how good you are. Yeah, 100%. What, what Frankie, I said, I'm the world's number one in Facebook ads. I've spent a billion dollars since May of 2007. I've run this dollar a day principle across the largest of companies and the smallest of companies. I have a best-selling book on this. I have training all over, whether it's through HubSpot or Infusionsoft or GoDaddy or whatever it is. And I'm really good at Facebook ads. So let's just say that's A. And B is... I've got Ken Hardison of Pilma talking about how good I am on video at his mastermind in webinars. I have Ali Awad. I have Ethan Ostroff. I have all the other top guys who are lawyers saying how good our techniques are and, and them talking about the results that they drive and them sharing how they are using our techniques to drive more real leads that turn into cases using social media ads, using Google ads, using SEO 
and I say nothing, but they're just talking about the results they get that they got. What's more powerful? Yeah, thousand percent, of course. But when they're talking about it, it's not a testimonial. Here's what I do. I have their explicit permission. So Ken runs Pilma for personal injury attorneys. For those of you guys who don't know, because obviously we're talking talking a little bit niche specific, but there's one of these in every kind of mm-hmm. local niche. Pilma is is one of the big conferences for injury lawyers. So it's a big association. There's like a coaching and a mastermind. And there's there's something like that, whether you're working with dentists, real estate, it doesn't matter who there is. There's a version of this in every industry. Yep. So Ken approached me at the end of, well, I just got off stage speaking at Ali's event. And he said, we got to work together. I really need some help with my digital marketing, my SEO and all this. I don't understand all this. And I know that you're the guy. I said, okay. So we took him on. And a few months later, we started generating these great results. So this is one of our guys submitting one of their daily reports. And we have tons and tons of these. And we found these mistakes. And we started fixing them. So this an example, like fixing 404s, we're using these different tools, we're editing the links, we're just fixing the, the SEO, okay? All these things that are broken. And we can show that we're getting more traffic. We can show that things are getting better, right? We're driving more signups for his mastermind or whatever it is that we're trying to do. And if I do a search on this, I can see there are tons and tons of these reports. And we then turn these reports here is a, a recent SEO performance report. Oh, here it is. I, I'm not going to download the file. But this, what we showed and taught later at Pilma's Mastermind, because he invited us to speak, we spoke at Ken's Internet Domination Bootcamp. We're literally showing off Ken's results. And I said, Ken, is it okay if we show off how bad your SEO was and how bad your social media was before. And then what we did, Oh, Dennis, absolutely show everyone. I don't mind. I, you know, I have, I'm, you know, I don't have a big ego. Go ahead and show what you fix. And they said, well, it's like this and like this and like this. And then back to my Google photos. If I got pictures and whatever with Ken Hardison or Ali Awad or Ethan Ostroff or whatever it is, <clears throat> let's say that, let's see, I was in Philadelphia a couple weeks ago. Philadelphia is in Pennsylvania. <clears throat> and I'm with Ethan Ostroff. Ethan Ostroff is the TikTok lawyer. So if, you, <clears throat> if you're a lawyer and you want to be on TikTok, you're going to look at Ethan Ostroff. And there's tons of videos of me and Ethan, and we're hanging out, and we're eating food, and we're doing all this other stuff. And we're with Bill, who runs SMB Team. And what does he do? He does digital marketing just for lawyers. Right. I'm giving you access to our pool of, yeah, you know, and I'm capturing tons and tons of behind the scenes stuff. Meanwhile, all the stuff is being categorized by Google. Then in a few days, Daryl Isaacs is flying into town. Daryl Isaacs is the hammer, super yeah. well known among personal injury attorneys. And what's going on here with Daryl Isaacs? Let's see. I sent him a pair of socks. He invited me to, to be at his conference. So then this, this is what he sent me a couple of days ago. This is now I'm inside my iMessage, right? Hey, Dennis, love the socks, love the note. Uh, yes, I can't wait to get the hammer on digital marketing. I'm doing a video because I know you want me to record my own. Can't wait to see you in Vegas. Now, how awesome is that versus if I said, hey, if you're a personal injury attorney, we can help you with your SEO. Versus Daryl Isaacs showing a pair of socks with his face on it. He didn't say anything about whether I'm any good at digital marketing or not. But why, why, would, why, would, I, why would this second piece be more powerful than me saying how good I am at PPC and SEO? Yeah, I mean, there, there's, for those of you guys who like, you know, obviously aren't in this niche, Daryl Isaacs is, is a relative celebrity with it in this industry. He's got some like really out there ads and, um, you know, that kind of thing, you know, there, there's an assumption built in that if, if Dennis is seen alongside the greats of the industry, that he must be great himself without him ever having to say that with words. And so it tends to appeal to the, like the top people in the industry, the movers and the shakers and the players all just through a little pair of socks. And I would actually love to get your thoughts on that too, because, yeah. you know, we've talked about this, but you're building real relationships. So there's no like magic script. There's no book. I'm sure you probably sent 
other people a pair of socks before of, of a similar kind. A few but, times. But you know, you're but you're actually like going above and beyond just like a, you know, let me send you a monthly report kind of thing, what most people are doing, and you know, actually connecting with the human being behind the organization. Yep. So we call that client love. And they don't have to be clients necessarily, but I invented this like 20 years ago. <clears throat> so if we think about Daryl Isaacs, who's run Super Bowl commercials and is a big time personal injury attorney, and he's known as the hammer, right? And he's done these great shows and in these big verdicts and call the hammer. See, look, he's, he's got a, a ton of great videos. Look at him. He sh- he's got a hammer here, right? Yeah. And you can see how awesome he is. You can see his commercials. If we go to his Facebook, we can see Daryl Isaacs is talking about being the hammer. And let me just show you. This is what I'm, this is literally from the last day or two. So this is not like, well, Dennis had this win a few years ago and he's just living off of this win and he doesn't do this all. No, this is what I literally do all day. All right, look. This was just a couple days ago. So here, he did this thing where he's lost 70 pounds. That's pretty cool. That has nothing to do with personal injury, okay? Let's look at all comments. You're a beast. Mm, I mean the hammer. Okay, great. And then I comment on this. And I say something that has nothing to do with personal injury. Where's my comment? Maybe it's not this one. Maybe it's another one. Anyway, I, somewhere here, I say something like, there's nothing more important than your health. So proud of you, my man. I'm trying to lose 50 pounds. He lost 70 pounds. And then he replies to everybody saying, you know, so grateful for you, that kind of thing. This has nothing to do with personal injury and SEO. What's going on here, Frankie? Yeah, I mean, there, there's a real magic of, of real relationships being built. Like I can't underestimate, I can't understate that enough is if you think like uh, that what clients are really trying to work with you for is because, you know, they want someone to run the TikTok or the Facebook ads. You were like seriously mistaken about what it is we're actually doing. And, and I wonder if you could articulate kind of in a way how you see this game, because I think people would be really interested in hearing what you have to say. Obviously, you have to be good at SEO and PPC and landing pages and driving leads. And you have to be good at all that. That's a given. The reason why the clients in your niche are going to choose you is because of the mutual relationships that you have. Because five other people in your niche also are using you and have great results, which a lot of people think it's testimonials. It's not it. They want to see the depth of the relationship. They don't want to see some bogus thing. Like imagine if I had a quote from Daryl Isaacs or or Ken Hardison saying, you know, working with Dennis has been fantastic because these are the results we had before. And now this is where we are and our business is booming. And I can't thank Dennis enough. Like that, that's good, right? Clearly. Yeah. That's not it. That's not what I'm talking about. That's called a testimonial. What we're showing is the depth of the relationship that we have together. So let me show you. I ordered this thing on Amazon that's arriving today. And it's a big Thor hammer. It's actually kind of heavy. I was looking at the reviews. So why would I order a Thor's hammer to come here so that I can bring it to Daryl when I see him in a couple of days <clears throat> and we can pose with the hammer and have a good laugh about that. Like, why would I do that versus just get Daryl to say on and on all these, I've got tons of, tons of quotes and videos with Daryl on zoom where he said all kinds of great things about me. And those are great, but showing me and him together with his hammer or him making a video with the socks which I'm repurposing down here. Looking forward to seeing you next week. Why is this, why is showing Daryl with a pair of socks with his face on it more powerful than <clears throat> working with Dennis You has completely transformed my social media game? Why is that more powerful? Yeah, I mean, I think you, like you said, it's uh, it's the the depth of relationship is like, I've I've experienced this in my own version of it where sometimes I'll find out that like somebody recommended me in a mastermind and same deal, like nothing about like, Oh, they do a great service. Just like, it's been really cool working with this guy. And then all of a sudden I'll wake up the next day and there's, you know, three dozen people who all want to work with me kind of thing. And and you can't, 
if I had said that myself, it would never have been 1% as powerful as if somebody they know, they like, they trust that they have a real relationship is, you know, demonstrating that like this person is cool. I mean, you, you really can't, you can't buy that. Yeah. Let I me show you another thing. A $30 hammer on Amazon, you can buy it, I should say. That is a, but what is the ROI on that $30 hammer? Yeah, like a gazillion percent for sure. But especially if I you, especially if you repurpose the video, use it as an asset and make sure it gets distributed and seen by people that you want it to be seen by. Amen. So the ROI on it's massive, but it's not an instant ROI. It's yeah. not book a call with me right now kind of ROI, which right. is not even the right kind of ROI because it's just like you said, it sets the wrong tone. Let me show you another example. I have, Can I, have, I just say on that point, because what nobody talks about with that is what Dennis is talking about too is, you know, like using the analogy he brought up in the beginning of like the surgeon versus, you know, the, the door to door knocking on your door. Hey, do you want to buy one of my things is the the frame that the client comes in the door with makes everything that happens after infinitely easier because they've already came to you as the surgeon as the expert as the you know the the go-to person as where if you kind of like knocked on their door and said hey i want to sell you some dentist facebook ads you may break through but they there there's instantly like a I would call it like a distrust and a hatred of marketers that you inherit because they've probably had so many bad experiences with people who are like kind of made similar promises to you. Mm -hmm. And so you're almost like fighting the client every step of the way as we're when they come in the door mm -hmm. and you're the, the most trusted surgeon in three states, there, there's a, hey, I'll just let you do your thing. There's like a tangible trust that, that translates to people being happier, staying longer, valuing what you do, paying more, actually getting the results because they follow your recommendations. Mm -hmm. And so those are the intangible ROI things that you can't easily measure versus like, oh, I knocked on seven doors and two of them answered and I made one sale. Ergo, my ROI is that. But yeah, but you don't necessarily see what that looks like when you project that three, four, five years into the, the, the long game. And as you're, as obviously like you're playing the long game better than probably anybody I know, but you see the, the long-term effects of starting those with warm relationships and, and using kind of basically, I mean, what you've taken is old school introduction re referral kind of tactics that have stood the test of time. And yeah. then, in many ways created like a modernized digital version of it where you're using the power of technology and leverage and advertisements to enhance those things, which I think is really intelligent. There's nothing new in what I'm doing. This existed before there was an internet, building yeah. relationships and having trust. I just apply this concept called the content factory to be able to get the most out of that and make it visible. The internet makes things visible. So I'm yeah. just taking advantage of that. And things like the iPhone, and Google Photos automatically tag who the people are and where they're from and whatnot. So I can repurpose the heck out of it a lot easier. A lot of the tools like a Descript or a Frame.io or a Jarvis or whatever make it so much easier. Let me share a couple more examples. So I did that mastermind call with Pilma, which is full of the personal injury attorneys. And one of the guys who runs digital marketing for the Kansas City accident attorneys, he was so struck that he made a video. Because he, he reached out to me on LinkedIn and I said something like, if, if you're so inspired, you should make a one minute video about what you've learned. And this is what we got. I just got off a call with Dennis Yu and we are doing uh, strength training at Kansas City Accident Injury Attorneys. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you to Dennis. Um, he met with me one-on-one, -on -one, gave me some super good marketing advice and pointers uh, for how to have real relationships with our clients, even though we're in this age of digital Zoom calls and all this stuff where you're not having a connection with your, with your clients. But uh, he worked with me to, to kind of generate some plans that we can use here at Kansas City Accident Injury Attorneys going forward. And uh, I'm super excited to see what we can do. And uh, thank you, Dennis, you, you're awesome. So isn't that, like, what do you think about that? Yeah. 
Yeah, you're spot on. Like if 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 you promote that, that'll sign you way more clients than any amount of, you know, we're the number one rated Facebook ad company by ABC and and showing here's uh, you know, our testimonials and things things like you mentioned, because the other thing too is, is, is when you build real relationships this way and then leverage them like you're doing through social media is in many ways, it's like a testimonial that people don't realize is a testimonial for that exactly. reason, because it's a content testimonial. It has a different effect. Like if I go on camera and say, Oh, we use Dennis you and I highly recommend his services. Give him a try. People are very aware that it's a testimonial, but if they're like, Hey, I just sat down with this guy. We did this cool thing, wanted to share it. It's, it's much more organic. You know, it's, it's the same reason why case studies are always better than testimonials because they're teaching examples of what you've done. And then, you know, that to me is a perfect example of it is like people get to see, and there's always this embedded assumption like, that people yeah. will pick up on, which is, well, if somebody like that is using Dennis, then I want that too, right? Like the, yeah. you don't even have to say that with, with any words. So let me ask you, Frankie, to see what you think. So he was doing a workout instead, you know, so he's breathing while he's breathing hard because he's working out and talking about this. How does that hit differently than him being in a studio giving this professional sounding testimonial? Yeah, I mean, a professional sounding testimonial is a commercial that you're aware is a commercial as were this like, you know, it is it's so organic that it just like the 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 skepticism people bring to it isn't the same like it really just kind of lands. I've, I found some of the, the same things, right? Like, it's amazing, like people, I think today in this day and age, too, especially like with just how much bullshit there is on social media, like kind of think at least some testimonials are fake. But when yeah. somebody says, hey, Dennis just came into my office, we're one on one, he gave me a plan, I'm really stoked to implement it. Um, nobody thinks, oh, he just, you know, paid for a testimonial or anything. They just think they're just sharing their experience, which they are. Obviously, you've asked them to do that, but there's a real magic in that. Yeah, that's the key, because there's so much nonsense and people yelling and trying to, you know, whatever, yell at people and, and stand out that the more authentic things that look authentic carry way more trust. So here's a bunch of these Zoom calls. And here's one from yesterday afternoon. And it's with Bill Hauser, who is- I know Bill. Yeah, well, for those people that do lawyer marketing, he's got a $20 million firm. And he has however many clients, a lot. Yeah. They're and, probably one of the biggest agencies in our industry, if not, you know, and top for five. Him, <coughs> we, here we are. <sighs> He's eating some Have chips. Repurposing this. See, he even knows we're going to repurpose this. But look at this. So I pull out the guitar. He asked me to sing a song. <laughs> and I sing Mary hey, I, the Lamb. I get to hear you sing here? <laughs> so I tune the guitar. Yeah. Obviously, it's out of tune. Ready? I got some funny, funny stuff. Um... So we're talking about all kinds of stuff. Now I'm coaching him on what he needs to do for his agency. He's already a pro. So I'm coaching pros. I'm showing where he's already ranking on PPC for law firms very well. We're doing a little SEO audit, content audit, talking about how he's not repurposing his best content. And then at the end, I'm showing also how I gift because people don't seem to do that. But listen to what he has to say at the end of this call. <laughs> it's so gold right there um I, right. it's like cheating is so good if you implement in, in fact you could offer shit service and they would still stay with you not to say that's an excuse for doing that um so hey let me do this i gotta send you the summary email to i to my team i'm gonna include bitblissmetrics.com slash acl that's uh -huh. the link right yep. um so i gotta go to the airport right now i'm going to chicago i'm speaking in front of uh all these lawyers tomorrow. Um, okay. Here, let me send a, uh, I'm gonna send a photo to Josh Nelson. We just did an interview on his Inc. 5000 uh, pen. Give me one second. Ready, you there? All right. Oh, actually here, I'll do it like this. I'll All do right. it. Ready? Yeah. All right, so. All right, cool. Yeah, tag me and Josh on Facebook. Josh has got a VA, so, but he'll, he'll see it if you actually tag.
Dennis, I think it's frozen at my end. I, I feel like I have buckets in my head now as to where your wisdom is going to be best channeled in as we continue working together. So yeah. uh, it means a lot to me because you have so much wisdom that it's. <laughs> it's a good. I feel I feel like I can ask you any question on anything in life because of your positioning. So, um, so yeah. Can I quote you on that? Yes. <laughs> um, cool. All right. So I'm can I quote you on that? They say yes every time. And I can literally go to Zoom call after Zoom call and listen to the part at the end where they say something really nice. Like here, this, this guy is a boss in digital marketing, Matthew Roach, if you're in the hotel space or in the travel space. Super well-known. Anyone in travel is going to know, just like you know, it, there's figureheads, like you said, in every single yeah. industry, right? So then if we listen to what he has to say. Can I just add before you get to that quote? Yeah. is the other thing that I don't think people realize enough is it's way more fun to create low key content, eating tacos, talking shit, having a good time than it is to have to create overly formalized kind of. It's awkward and staged. It's not right. It doesn't the yeah. vibe is not right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you can see this guy says some incredible stuff on like, I wouldn't trust anybody else. I have all these people trying to sell me digital marketing. You're the only one I'd listen to. And then you can see I'm laughing about it because I think it's awesome. But let's see what he has to say. This is just yesterday. Brilliant uh, knowing you because there are sometimes, I mean, I'm probably asking you pretty low level questions, but um, there are questions that sometimes it's so hard to get the answers for. And even when I ask agencies some of these questions, I just, I know that they don't even know as much as I do, you know, but I, I really doubt some of these agencies and, and how good they are effective. And um, you're the only person I really trust who actually really knows um, what's how to do this. So, I mean, obviously there are other people in the world, but yeah. probably even that means America. a lot to me. I appreciate that. Can I quote you on that? Ah, you can give me. You can do it, <laughs> Mr. Mario from me. Yeah. If you can get my site to be really big, Dennis, then I'll. Uh... Okay. So you see, I'm literally doing this all day long, and he's been a client for six years, seven years. He's fantastic. And so if you, so it's not that you're just pandering for compliments you have to deliver too when you deliver you can tell the vibe of the calls and what they say you just can't replicate that no yeah. amount of software and vas and whatever can replicate the relationship and trust that you build but the vas and the software are going and the process that ties it all together is going to help you amplify what you have so that you never have to worry about getting clients ever again so as, as proof of this, I have never done an outbound call. I have never done cold route outreach ever. I have never applied to speak at a conference ever. It's all invite. Every client we've ever had, whether it's a Nike or a Red Bull or a Starbucks or whatever, they've come to us because of these techniques. So if I can do this and get the Golden State Warriors as a client and run their ads for five and a half years because they reached out, you could do it for whatever clients in your niche. Yeah, thousand percent. And I, I just want to say for for people who like think like this, because a big part of it, at least to me, is your thinking about relationships. What I call like playing chess when everyone else is playing checkers. Yeah, you know, checkers to me is, is a really simple game. You move left or right. You can teach it to a ten year old in an hour, uh, under an hour, as where you know, chess masters train a long, long time. And the really great chess masters are thinking five, 10 moves in advance. And, and that's the real key. Like you mentioned, like you're, you're identifying who the real figureheads are, who the movers and shakers and, and bringing real value to those relationships, but also capturing those at the same time. And then having a team to distribute those things and also helping those same people to distribute their own stuff better, more efficiently, because you know, when it comes to creating content, which everybody know works, but the, the challenge with that, as you mentioned, is like the factory of, of outputting, which you've done such a brilliant job of systematizing and organizing. But at the, the front of it, to me, is it's like just Dennis, you old school, connecting with real meaningful people, delivering real value, and then using the tools of the internet and automation and algorithms and SEO and paid ads and all those kind of things to, to make sure eyeballs that are relevant, see that. And then it's, 
the whole thing is a pull machine instead of a push machine, which I think is just a smarter way of doing it. It takes more legwork to get it started, but the surgeon doesn't chase you. The surgeon, the surgeon doesn't ever knock on your door and say, Hey, anybody in your house considering surgery surgery today? You know, it's just like, you know, run. And, and then when you think about that, like agency owners, I see this where they're, then they're all upset that like, their clients don't see them as experts and things like that. And it started with how you approached them in the first place as where there's a huge difference. Like I can tell you just if somebody sees Daryl Isaacs, which, you know, outside of personal injury, probably many, not many of you guys will know him, but in our space, I'd say like probably 80% of lawyers know who he is, right? Like at least in my space, they would, they may not, you know, be huge fans of him or whatever, but they, they know his name when they see Dennis and him together, there's, there's, there's a pull mechanism that says, well, if Daryl's using him, he probably could hire anybody and has the budget to hire whoever the best of the best is, you know, and I see they're doing really well, you know, Dennis, you what must be one of his secrets. And it's like, there's a pull mechanism in place. And like you said, you know, which leads to not having to chase people with inbound, not having to do calls, not having, not, and, and then there's, like I said, everything that carries forward in that relationship, because how you found them is a, a very different thing. I used to experience this because I had to, my first SEO agency was built as a push agency. So I had about a uh, hundred clients and I was mostly doing white label stuff. And what happened is I got a guy who would literally, he would go to the conference, he would meet a plastic surgeon. And then the next time he was in their city, he would kind of just forcefully kick the door open. He would just show up at their office and be like, I'm here to sell you a website and I'm not leaving until you buy a website. Mm -hmm. And a certain percentage of people, he would sell them websites. But there was like a tangible distrust that would follow, like clients would cancel. They would have all these questions about SEO and, and in disguise, they're trust like we don't trust you guys kind of you're not really yeah. an expert kind yeah. of questions as where you know when you do this kind of pull mechanism you never really get those things because you know people know like they already know you you've been working with daryl isaacs show me some of what you're doing and there's a there's a humility client shows up with and then um you know like i said that that flows through to like you know you mentioned keeping the golden state warriors for five and a half years, there's a whole magic lesson in and of itself of not just getting the Golden State Warriors, but setting it up so they're they're staying with you for you know half a decade or longer, right? Like most people churn and burn through clients yeah. in like three four months. Yeah. And when you have like you know big name players, and it makes your business life a lot easier when you can forecast when you know like you know just monetarily like you got payroll and things like that. Well, we know we have the Golden State Warriors check coming on the third. That'll help, you know, like just having a business that runs that way. And it's such a smarter way of, to me, of like delivering expert authority, kind of celebrity kind of positioning where people seek you out rather than you having to go, you know, find people, but, but you've strategically put yourself in front of them. So, you know, I, I always joke, like there's ways where like on Facebook where I'll add people, put them into a list and then make a post that makes them think they found me in reality, I've gone out to seek them. And it's, it's the same kind of idea where you're using those relationships to warm up relationships way faster than you could ever do on your own. You can use dollar a day to drive leads directly, but the really smart expert use of the dollar a day strategy, which we've spent a billion dollars on the last 15 years is wow. using it to uplift that high authority content. Yeah. So me and Ken Hardison and Ali Awad and Bill Hauser and Daryl Isaacs and all the other people, I'm spending my money to do PR for them. Is really what I'm doing. We got a That's special visitor now. Two of them. Uh, who's our special visitor? This one is Heidi B. And this one is Zelda B. <laughs> How about you, Golden Bees. <laughs> They're so cute. Yeah. So this one's about to turn four over here, and this one's about to turn three. Here, here, we'll share, we'll share. You can share daddy's lap. I think that probably means uh, I've stolen enough of your awesome, amazing time, Dennis. <laughs> well, it's awesome, Frankie. I'm going to send you this report. Okay, girls, I think even this part here could be, a, could be a good little hook, get people interested. Yeah, totally, right? They're, it's they're like right. cheating to have kids, cute kids. Yeah. Um, I just want to say, firstly, I, I really do appreciate it. Like your, uh, the way your mind works on this, like just talking to you makes me up level my thinking, like right on the spot. Like there, there's no higher compliment I could give somebody than just talking to you makes me up level. What's even possible? We're here to help agency owners. 
and agency owners are struggling generating leads. They think that's their biggest issue. We can instantly solve the lead gen issue. Yeah. Build your authority. If you don't have authority, if you don't have the connections, partner with other people who do. So we get inbound leads. We get requests from every single industry, home services, real estate, mortgage, personal injury attorney, chiropractors, dentists. Do you think that we're serving all these clients ourselves? Yeah, of course not, right? You have systems. No, we have partners. Yeah. And so we do rev shares with these other agency owners. And I do get a lot of agency owners to say, hey, you know, we're a dental agency. Can you send all your dental leads to us? And I'll say, why should I? Oh, well, we'll pay you a commission. Yeah. Yes, but it's our relationships. Here's what, what I'll do. If you're a dental agency, for example, or whatever niche you choose, I'll send you those leads if, and this goes back to Perry's if, if, then else. If you practice what we preach, don't just say that you do, but you actually do. Like you are sharing the stuff that Frankie and I are talking about. You're actually making one minute videos talking about the content factory and dollar a day and how you do SEO. We have training on every single one of these topics, PPC, SEO, building websites, you know, whatever it is. If you're sharing content that's uplifting Vendasta and you look at the Vendasta training that we have, for example, you, you know, I have never put more effort. I've made a lot of training. I have not put in more effort into any training that I have than our Vendasta training. That's not what this one is. Let me just show you. There's, I got so many things open. Um, yeah, I know you're a good entrepreneur just based on the number of tabs you have open. If it's a, you got to have a lot open because you got a busy creative brain. But if you have if you have too many open, then I know you're too unfocused and distracted. Yeah, okay, okay. gentle girls, gentle girls. Here it is. Okay, so this conquer local thing. So we'll, go we'll build something and Papa will come just. Right no, I'm no? All right, Heidi's gonna stick around. All right. So we originally talked about. Which, which was the spark for this conversation. So funny. Yeah, yeah, the Conquer logo. <laughs> the original spark was this no, training. Daddy. I put together this for agencies at the request of Brendan King, who's yeah. the founder of Vendasta. And Brendan and I have been friends since before he started Vendasta. Well, I think because they're closer to the microphone, they get they're louder than you are. I didn't know that. I'll tell you what, I'll just I'll mute us while you're talking for a second. Yeah. So I look at all the stuff that I've done in LA. There's a bunch of cool people I've been hanging out with, you can see. Because I'm searching Google by different cities and whatnot. You can see all the places that I've been. Oh, look, there's Steve Sims. We're making videos to Steve Sims. And here are my parents. Choose your own adventure here. This one was with the uh, not Jake Paul, the other Jake. Why is it not showing up here? Oh, there's my mom. She's got a. Oh, we're making videos at the beach. Where's the one I'm looking for? This is at Jake Paul's house. Isn't that neat? This is before he moved. There's Caden Phipps, who is one of the young agency owners I've trained up. You know what? I can't find the one that I want in here. Oh, look, there's Michael Stelzner and the top digital marketer in Utah. There's Brendan, or sorry, Brennan, who runs our SOC company. Where can I find the one I'm looking for? I can't find the one I'm looking for. Well, anyway, Brendan King and I have made a ton of videos and in coaching him and then his firm on how agencies can grow, we put together Conquer Local Academy. And this is the most in-depth training. It's completely free. And I show everything in growing seven-figure agencies. I've interviewed a ton of seven-figure agency owners. And this is pure gold. Anyone that wants to learn to grow an agency the right way should check this out. Now, this is a series of YouTube videos. But if you want to go through the exercises, you'll see that it's here on the site as well. So there's a community here. Sign up and join. It's completely free. And all the stuff is here. And it starts with how do you build a lighthouse? So if you've chosen a niche, it's real estate agents, let's say, whatever it is. 
then find out who the lighthouses are. If you do not know the lighthouses, partner with other people like us that do. If you have a partner like us and you can leverage the content that we've made, then we can drive you leads and you can instantly get the benefit of having done this for many, many years, even if you don't have the connections. So based on the if, if, then else, if you go through this training and you take action as you make tons of one minute videos, not just one or two one minute videos, but you uplift these other figureheads because you're consuming the training, because you're implementing it yourself, because you're going through all these different things like we're showing how to do all this kind of stuff. So if you actually take the action and visibly anybody can tell that you're a content producer and you're saying thank you, just like I'm saying thank you to Daryl Isaacs or Perry Marshall or whatever, then I will give you leads. We have more leads than we know what to do with in every single category. And a lot of people will say, yeah, well, there's, there must be some catch and there's no way that he can actually do this or he won't actually give us the leads. I'll tell you, Frankie, the number of people that actually take action, actually make one minute videos, actually build their personal brand, actually consume our training is, is so low. There's only a few people that come through and I'm happy to partner with them because here's, here's the thing. It's not that I'm trying to set up a bunch of hoops just to get people to jump through them. If I'm going to refer leads their way, I need to know that they can deliver. Because if they can't, if they don't know how to implement the content factory, if they don't know how to repurpose content, if they don't know how to say thank you at scale, if they don't know how to build relationships, and I just, because I've literally, I'm not going to name names, but there's some people that are actually recently well-known on our industry that will say, hey, you know what? I want you to give me leads in LA for mortgage brokers. Oh, and I also, in Dallas, I want more chiropractors. And I want this and I want that. I'm like, what are you talking about? That's not how this works. No, but you said you can generate leads. So I need more, like in LA, just in the next week, I need 10 more leads. Of, like, that's not how it works. So if you, if you honor what we do, we'll generate leads for you. We do a rev share off of it, but we need to know you can deliver. So when we're teaching the content factory, I can then say, hey, you know, Frankie Finn, he implements the content factory. Now we could do it for you, but I think it'd be way better because Frankie's, you know, I, I trust Frankie. He, he's certified in our techniques. And I wholeheartedly recommend that, that Frankie can handle this stuff. If they're a personal injury attorney that comes in and wants digital marketing, right? I'm happy to do that. I have an abundance mindset. Most agency owners have a scarcity mindset. There's just not enough leads. You know, maybe like Frankie and I are competitors because we both serve personal injury attorneys. Not at all. I'm yeah. trying to get out of the agency business. That's why we're sending leads to all these other agencies. There's a handful of agencies that we trust that are friends of mine. And it's great because we generate tons of leads for them. We send them the business. We know they can execute. We know how they track. We know the results. We uplift them. If you look at my Facebook feed, you'll see tons of other agency owners that I coach, could be like a Bill Hauser, and they're succeeding, not because of me, but I just love being a part of that. And I love uplifting their results. And then that helps grow their brand. That helps generate more leads for them. And that's using me in, in the most powerful sort of way. And then it's easy for me because I don't have to do the fulfillment. And I know that if I send leads over to these other agencies that they can fulfill. So that's the main thing I have to say for anyone who's come this far, or if Frankie repurposed this, you know, as one little snippet. that people Which I say. will, by the way, because I go. learned from a master. <laughs> yeah. So if you're an agency owner listening to this, then repurpose the heck out of the content that you see with Frankie and I. Show that, don't just say that you know how to do this. 99% of agency owners, they keep telling me they know how to do this, don't tell me, show me. Oh yeah, but I know how to do all that. I understand the content factory. Now give me leads. Show me you can do it. Show me that you can create a gratitude video with your mom. I don't know, whoever it is. Show me you can do a gratitude video. Are you so small-minded you can't do that? If you can't even do that, then we can't trust you with the figureheads. It's taken us a long time to build these relationships with figureheads in every industry. Hell yes, my friend. Hell, hell yes, which I think I'll just add that I think this is a, such a, a chess smarter strategy level of doing it than what most people are teaching. Like if, if I see, I probably say about 95% of the people in our space are teaching either do some outreach or Facebook ads, book your calendar full, give them some generic Facebook ads thing. And, and 
you know, then you see people come out the other side and nobody really talks about that, which is burnt out refunds, crazy to manage clients. And what you're talking about is this high level expert positioning where you integrate with the top players in your industry, you deliver real value and, and you're helping them with their own distribution and helping them leverage their message further. And as a result, um, you know, you create these evergreen relationships that just don't go out of style and you're always adding something to that. And it doesn't require like constant ongoing effort to maintain. So I love that. And these are great clients. You know, if they're not cool to work with, I don't care how much money they have. I don't want to do that. So we had Red Bull as a client for a few years. And what agency would not want to have Red Bull as a client, right? And I was thinking as a younger agency owner, yeah, I want Red Bull. I I can't say no to Red Bull, but they were so hard to work with. They're so demanding. They were so unreasonable. They wanted things that were just not even possible technically. And I tried to explain it to them and they just pooped all over me. Yeah. And the dentist of today, if Red Bull came in and said, we want this, this, and this, I'll say, well, we can do two of these three things, but this third thing is not technically possible. So I'm sorry, right? If you, if you want two out of the three, we can give you those. I'll ask Facebook, I'll ask Google if they can make changes to their API so that we can do the stuff that you want, but it's not possible. Not and possible. if they said no to that, I'm like, well, I'm sorry. I know you're Red Bull. I would love to work with you, but no. So I only work with people I like that are good people that we vibe. I don't care how much money they have. I don't care how much reputation they have. They have to be people I like. And so I design my life around working with people that I enjoy. And you know, the funny thing is that I'm making more money this way than I am as, than I would be as a struggling agency owner, just trying to say yes to everything, trying to book as many calls as I can. And I think that that's the way that that's what we should all be striving to. My buddy, Tony Ricketts runs Lawnline Marketing out of Tampa. He is a multi seven figure agency and he has no salespeople. You know why that is? And he keeps growing. He's growing at 40, 50% every month. In in January, when he exhibits at the big show for all the landscaping lawn care companies, he's going to be up at 300K MRR. So that's being a $4 million agency. And you know why? It's because his client retention's at 99%. He sells higher ticket packages, $34,000 a month. And his retention's so high that he doesn't need to keep acquiring clients. The clients he gets come in naturally, just like I told you about, because of referral, because of the reputation he has in the industry. And thus, he just he can easily close two or three new clients a month all by himself. Doesn't require a sales team. There's no commissioning going on. And that's exactly the way to run a business. You see, the agencies that that think I need more clients, I need more clients. Your issue is actually client churn, yeah. not client acquisition. Yeah, a thousand percent. It's it's hard to 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 realize that too because you don't realize you know I, I've built that kind of agency and you just what you're really doing is just burning a reputation quickly. <laughs> But you don't know it. And then it and then acquisition gets harder and harder as you go because it's yeah. like, well, I heard about you guys. I talked to so and so and they 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 didn't they said your stuff didn't work for me or whatever, those kind of things. Right. And a lot of times I I do really empathize with agencies a lot because a lot of times it's not even that the agency itself is flawed. It's because you know that Perry Marshall if you are the right person is they haven't taken on the right person in the first place. And therefore there was nothing they were going to do that was going to cause them to succeed. But in the churning process, just, you know, they just build and burn a reputation for themselves really, really quickly. And they think because it's all digital, that these Mm -hmm. people don't talk behind closed doors and things like that. And it doesn't eventually catch up to you, which I can assure you is not the case in every industry. By Oh, they talk. They all talk. Yeah. Yeah. I'll leave you with one final secret, Frankie. You could be an agency owner and you're good at selling and getting on the phone and whatever, but you probably suck at fulfillment. I have a list of the white label fulfillment partners that I trust, that I've sent a ton of clients through so that we don't have to worry about actually doing the Facebook ads or the Google ads or the SEO. Even if you have the right white label fulfillment partner, and what these guys do is they do the work for the agencies as the agency. But even if you have a white label partner, that's not enough because you have to have a process and it has to integrate with your package. If you're not clear on exactly what package you have and you don't have these other strategic components, 
You can have the best white labeled Google and Facebook ads or high level or whatever WordPress, it won't matter. So if you reach out to Frankie or me, I'm happy to show you the list of these people that we use, but just know that that's not enough. You need other pieces. Huge, my man, much appreciated. And you are right because it is, you know, it, it, it's one of those things that I think uh, not enough people really, really, really think about the, the value they're going to add. They're so caught up in the, I need to acquire clients that not enough of them think about what am I going to do that's going to create long-standing value and enhance those relationships. And, and a lot of it is like you, you called it client love, those little touches, the little extras, as I call them, mm -hmm. that, you know, like, for example, I just had a guy tell me, it, it came up, for example, I had a client that we drove the same first car. Mm. Um, I don't know, I had a shitty Oldsmobile 88. It was my first car, it was a rust bucket. You could, and apparently when he made it as a lawyer, he drove that car for like two or three years, even though he, he, he no longer needed to. And I asked him why, and he said something along the lines of, uh, you know, my grandpa used to smoke a tobacco pipe in the car. He gave me this car and he died. And for years later, I rode in this car because it always reminded me of grandpa. It smelled like and every time I got in the car, I'd be reminded of my grandpa. So I went on Amazon, like similar to your Thor hammer idea. And I just looked, is, is there anything that has that tobacco smell? I found there's a tobacco candle and I clicked and read the, the reviews and the, the top rated review said, reminds me of grandpa. So there was a no brainer. I spent 20 bucks and got a candle. And when you send that, like whenever you want to be reminded of grandpa, just light this thing up. You don't That's have awesome. to drive a piece of shit car. Those little things will do far more for having clients stay than because your Facebook ads are 10% more brilliant than the next guy's Facebook ads. But you do both. Yeah. Do both. Definitely do both. So, um, but it's not just about Facebook ads. You know, there's nothing when you get in this game early on, you think, Oh, if I just make people money, they'll they'll be happy with me. And there's nothing worse than you get a client a 10x return on their money and they fire you a week later and you go, what just mm -hmm. happened here? Mm -hmm. um, and there's usually, you know, all kinds of gaps in the relationship itself that lead to that. It's relationships all day long. Any service business is fundamentally based on relationships. Yeah, thousand percent. Well, I just want to thank you, Dennis. I've kept you for 90 minutes. I know you're about to go do an awesome hike and uh, I appreciate you. You're just sharing your genius, making more and more content to put into the factory, my man. Let's do it. This makes you and me both look good. And more importantly, we're helping a ton of agency owners. I yeah. think if we can shift the tide on how agency owners do their marketing, yeah. it's going to get rid of the snake oilness that's currently surrounding agency owners. And it'll be more like, you know, the prestige of a pilot. So yeah. where's the next place you're flying, Frankie? Uh, right now, nowhere, because these little monsters. Are what, what was the last flight you were on? Um, I guess from here to Mexico City. So when you went to Mexico City and you were boarding that airplane, did you wonder who the pilot was or question whether they're competent yeah. or whether you're going to crash? Of course not. Right. There's an embedded. He's the expert. He knows. I trust him. There's no like, hey, what are you doing up there? Can you can, can you give me a, an update on how things are going? Right. It's a. Uh, and shouldn't your digital marketing be so good that you don't even need to know like who's running your Facebook ads or whatnot? You don't need to know the individual, but because you trust American Airlines, you trust whoever the brand is, right? That's what we as agency owners need to have. Can you imagine if, let, let's say I started uh, supercheaparlines.com, right? And let's say the flight on American Airlines was $389. But the flight on supercheaparlines.com was $79. And everything about it was fantastic. You know, all the seats are first class. There's wonderful food. The service is great. We have brand new airplanes. They land on time. Everything's fantastic for $79, Frankie. But we have a 1% chance that we're going to crash and burn and everyone's going to die. Which means 99% of the time, everything's fantastic. But 1%, we crash and burn. Would you buy that $79 ticket? I might take a chance, but you know, would you? <laughs> to your point, yes, of course not, right? You know, it's it, and that, I, I, I get the analogy you're making is that that's how we want marketing agencies to be seen. I've, I've, I've often joked about this with personal injury lawyers because I'll tell them, you know, the only people with worse reputation than you guys are us. <laughs> um, but, but we want to change that for sure. And, and I love what you're doing, by the way. I just want to give a little plug to the fact that. You know, you're in the process of creating a million jobs. And I've mentioned this before, like politicians kind of do that as, 
we're going to create jobs and we're getting like, it's this rah, rah thing, but there's no real substance. You're actually, you're training people, you're building communities. You're, you're, you're there in Pakistan and India on foot, actually like growing out and training people so that they can actually support these structures and the expert status and creating content and help people build these kind of systems and tools and things like that. Amen. It's a long journey. I'm glad you're on it with me. Yeah. Good seeing you, man. Yeah. Appreciate it, my friend.